Let's unmute the microphone. You might be able to hear me better. Okay, guys, welcome to your session for this evening. It is a full one from last week. Uh, great to see so many of you here again. And we're looking at another six stocks or share CFDs that could fly in 2023 under $1. We might even have a quick look at uh, the others. But as before, what we're going to do is we'll have a little bit of a meander around the markets for right now. We'll then uh, look at these six stocks. We'll I'll talk very briefly about them, and then we'll have a look at a chart and suggest when uh, an entry may occur. Let's get kicked off. Obviously, we need to um, check in on this important message. Just remind you that this is for educational purposes only, and um, as a result, please do your own due diligence on anything you see here. You must make decisions for yourself, follow trading plans, and manage risk on every trading action. Good day for the ASX. We did okay in a couple of positions we opened. We might just reference those along the way. Just the rules of the game are under dollar, all tradable share CFDs on MT5, as well as obviously on any with any shares broker platform. And evidence for both fundamental and price recovery. We're obviously been in a bear market. It wasn't a good year for stocks. And so we've seen quite a lot of stocks at value. So last week, what did we choose? We chose PLL in the um uh, in the lithium space, we chose BRN, Brain Chip Holdings, MGX, so Mag Gibson Iron. We looked at Zip, we looked at EML, and we looked at Mesoblast as well. So those are our six from last week. We might check in on those. So Paladin Energy, obviously, you big in the uranium space, uranium producer and explorer. The fundamentally supporting this is a move to alternative energy sources in the medium to long term. That's obviously not going to happen overnight. Uh, we have. Uh, seen already evidence this week of, of price positivity in this. Certainly, there is international support for nuclear power and to relook at it and to ramp things up. Japan came out towards the back end of last year, I think it was November, uh, and committed to uh, increasing their use of nuclear power. Obviously, the French and some of the other European countries are, are following suit. So, there is a clear fundamental story. It's just a case of, of, of seeing evidence rather than words would will help push this stock higher. We would suggest this is a low risk. Uh, of the ones we're looking at, we're trying to sort of put them into low, medium, high risk. Sometimes they're sort of on the border between the two and um, uh, Paladin is one of those. EML, thanks, John. Um, so let's just have a look at, I need to have a look at art, the, the chart. Um, so Paladin, this is our actual chart of the day. We put a YouTube, I put a YouTube video up uh, on this. So fundamentally, we've got the backstory that's good. Uh, it was trading within a range between around about 67 and 72. Breached that a couple of days ago, took it up to the 200 MA, little pause there, and then a move higher today. Uh, so this is undoubtedly technically looking strong as well. In the first instance, uh, certainly a move up to around about 83 is on the cards that's about eight percent wouldn't be surprised to see it medium term uh around about late 80s and maybe even mid 90s uh within the next two or three months um not a bad price target uh i think that's probably a price target for uh maybe four or five months time i would say it'll be pretty close to a dollar i really like paladin uh, going forward. What's my criteria for selecting these stocks? I think I've given that, but essentially I want to see evidence uh, that they're fundamentally solid. Um want to see uh, technically that they, uh, in all of them, there'll be a technical sort of entry, but there has to be some fundamental reason for uh, getting interesting, interest in this shape. So I've given that for, I hope that sort of um, is illustrated by uh, by what I talked about with Paladin there. Okay, so um, just looking through. Um, yeah, I do. I, I think that's a fair call, uh, John. I think that um, there is undoubtedly a um, undoubtedly some twitch still re regarding nuclear power, but I think there's enough evidence out there to suggest that all of the worries uh, possibly of um, possibly. Uh, of, uh, that were kicking around in the sort of uh, 80s and 90s and the Chernobyls, uh, short of conflict, and that's the really uh, that's the really scary bit if you look at what the Russians were doing in Ukraine. Uh, so there is that issue uh, undoubtedly, but um, I think people are, are less, provided it's not on their doorstep, 
Uh, people are less twitchy about nuclear power than they were. Uh, but it is it is probably country dependent. Okay, and, and obviously there was the there was a tsunami uh, that I think got pretty close. They had to shut a, a, a nuclear plant down in Japan when there was that big tsunami uh, uh, quite a few years ago. So it is an issue, and, and it, so politically it's got to be uh, done. Um, <laughs> I'm so quite fashionable. Yes, yes. You're in fine fooling tonight, Rod. <laughs> Okay, next one is ALG. This is Ardent Leisure Group. Uh, they are in the leisure entertainment assets. They've got assets in Australia. Less so now in the US. They've got a lot of the theme parks over in Queensland. Uh, they own most of those. Uh, they had US, a lot of US entertainment centers, but they sold a big chunk of those off last year. Uh, and consequently, they, the business was essentially split. Uh, and we saw a fairly dramatic drop off in, in price i'll show you that it was all shareholders got a massive payout and etc etc but the remaining part of the business has been quite strong certainly the last earnings season uh, suggested that was the case despite the fact this is obviously in the consumer discretionary sector um which was obviously a risk when you're in a high inflation environment um so the next earnings will be key in terms of uh in terms of is this story one that may uh, continue they like most Australian companies I think they're next due to report in, uh, towards the back end of February and so that's uh, certainly worth um, certainly worth bearing in mind with any of these um, yeah, so that 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 is that is important. So I think part of your um, part of your process should be to to have a look, and you can get US, uh, you can get earnings dates all from all, all over the place. Um, uh, there's the futures. We you can see those are turning slightly positive again. Um, that's where the uh, European markets are. You can see they're growing um, now. Go to this site if you haven't got this site already. Get it. Uh, get access to it because it's a, a great site. Uh, so if we wanted to look at ALG, I use this all the time on uh, some of the uh, sessions that we run. So we can look at ALG there. We can. Uh, it's got a little chart. It's got some of the essentially some of the key fundamentals. It is a dividend paying stock. Uh, so it was November, I think they um, they changed their assets. So yeah, 24th of February is the interim report that'll be really really quite important in terms of what the um uh what the sort of impact of all that is so they're still recovering a little bit from that so that's the key determinant i think this is the first earning season since that split and you can see on a chart here there's the daily chart drop actually it was july it happened no, sorry not november so you can see here that really we've subsequent to that investors weren't sure it popped its way up to around about 60 around about 70 cents dropped down significantly to test 50 and really has been in a very very slow uptrend for a weekly chart you'll see how slow this is uh, but really we've got a couple of key levels here i would say 65 is a, a, an absolute level that's the level that will get me excited about it for obvious reasons now it's difficult to tell technically about where this would go because this was obviously created this candle here or this gap here on the daily chart. So we're not gonna get a standard gap fill here because this was created on the back of, on the back of sale of a big chunk of the company. But we certainly could see it uh, start to push higher. 65 would suggest a, a, a change in sentiment. And of course, even if you like the idea of, of this, it may be 60, 61, it's still 6% um, up to 65. So. Uh, it's not shabby, whichever way you slice it, uh, but I would be waiting until 65, particularly in light of where we are now, and I wouldn't mind seeing that earnings report uh, soon. Right, okay, I hope that uh, makes sense. Uh, STX, Strike Energy. Now, um, this is in the gas primarily, although it does do some oil as well. Now, although there is the move away, the reason why I've included an oil stock is we've already talked about oil being in a low point of a range but there's many 
oil analysts now that are suggesting that really that's probably about as low as it should go uh, for right now. If it goes in lower than that, there's a couple of things that will happen. Um, first of all, we'll see OPEC tighten up. Uh, and secondly, the price is where it is to some degree because of the lockdown in China. As China reopens, and it is, then we'll see an increase rather than the demand destruction. We'll get short term uh, moves higher in, de in demand. That's going to start to impact on supply a little bit. And we may see, or we should see, oil and gas starting to move higher again. So, although from a medium to long term point of view, I'm not that um, possibly, um, I'm not that enamored with a, with an energy stock uh, outside of nuclear. Um, it's it's the same story with coal. Coal is is going to be popular now until there's a, a until there's a, a change, and not change takes time. We'd say this is a medium risk stock, uh, and if we look at the chart again, um, uh, do, 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 STX, where are we at? Uh, really quite a cheap stock. Uh, that doesn't mean it's necessarily good, but you can see here. Um, we had a fairly major retracement from 36 to 30. Okay, that's a 20% drop off. Uh, but despite the drop in oil, look what's happening to the underlying stock. So we're at 38. Where does that sit? Uh, well, it's pretty damn near its all time high. And why is that the case? Well, they're doing well. They're actually smashing it out of the ballpark, is the phrase that comes to mind. That should be added to the dictionary, by the way. You guys will keep them on. Um, so if we look at a five-year chart just for confirmation you can see there it's all-time high was in 2021 uh, and it was 40 cents so it's really close to that i think if it breaches 40 that will get me interested that says yes there's something else there uh, again we're expecting earnings coming in uh, pretty soon in january so uh, watch that quarterly report on the 20th probably wouldn't get into it until that quarterly report is out but watch the 20th of January. That's going to be interesting from this uh, um, from this sort of uh, date here. Uh, what's that? Nine days. So that's end of next week. Uh, yeah. So I would hold off until there just for confirmation, but then be on your button. If we look at, uh, you can see there, they've actually come off market takeover. But that's interesting. Some interesting stuff going on with STX, possibly a takeover target going on, and that's going to help as well. Number four is Santa Barbara Mining. It would be it would be um, remiss of me since I've talked about gold not to include a gold stock, although I would prefer to trade the underlying commodity, generally speaking. Many of you prefer to trade the share or the share CFD, and Santa Barbara looks like a good bet um, below a dollar. It's obviously... Uh, based in Australia, and I think the US dollar is going to be under more pressure, and I think all of this is going to be positive for, for gold going forward. I would even suggest that this could be a low a low risk stock, generally speaking, compared to some of the ones we've looked at in the last two sessions. Uh, and again, if we have a look at a chart, um, let's just pop it on here. Oops, there we go. So we did touch the 200 MA uh, three sessions ago and we dropped down fairly well from that. So we'll be looking for a breach of uh, a breach of 93, maybe even 95. And then we'd see it up to a dollar probably pretty quickly. Um, medium term target on this uh, would be a dollar 10. Um, technically, that looks as though where it, it, it might stop. Uh, so it might be one that you could potentially accumulate into. Uh, if you want to trade the bounce, then that's possible. Clearly, this has been a big profit take. Uh, there's been no fundamental news to, to do that. So that's a technical trade to the downside. If you wanted to treat like that as a retracement or a wave or whatever you want to call it, uh, then I would probably wait for signs that it had turned, uh, that we have actually got a reversal. So maybe a um, maybe a, a sort of if we breach that 87, then I think that we'll retest uh, the uh, 200 MA, which is still a very nice six and a half percent. 
um, and then accumulate if it subsequently breaches 94. That might be a way to go. Gold is moving well, says Peter. Um, we can have a look at that. Let's just see how we're going. Uh, 1886, yes, that sounds as though it is moving well towards the top of the session. That's good. Okay, this will be good for um, this will be good for uh, for Saint Barbara Limited. Uh, as I said, I, I, I've not been a gold book for ages, but the US dollar doing what it's doing, I think there's there's some there's some money to be had in commodity trading at the moment. Uh, right, okay, let's uh, move on to number five. Oh, I've missed one. Wrong to number six. How interesting is that? Oh. Hang on a minute. I've sold you short. Okay, if we want another lithium stock, if you don't and you want it a bit cheaper, then SYA Siona Mining Limited. Uh, the advantage of SYA is they do have they are have got some strategic partnerships with PLL, who are one of our um, one of our stocks from last week, who have done pretty well this week. Uh, but they do have um, projects in Canada and West as well, as well as WA and North America. So quite well, um, quite well spread in terms of uh, uh, in terms of its exposure, and, and they are producers. Uh, it's not um, we're just digging here and hoping for the best. We are actually seeing some output. Uh, company earnings are showing growth. Lithium is recovering. That certainly has been helped this week. Um, auto sales looking okay, better than expected. That's going to uh, play into the narrative of uh, play into the narrative of, of the EV story, uh, which is undoubtedly growing. Probably not the rate, but I would say this is a medium to high risk, simply because probably slightly more speculative than PLL and certainly more so than PLS. But nevertheless, he's in a good place. I wouldn't put it in front of you unless it was. Uh, let's have a look at um, uh, let's have a look at it now. Uh, SYA, there we are. We're trading at 24 and a half. It was up four and a half percent, but obviously just small moves in this uh, makes the difference. So we're actually at a key level. I would suggest um, I'd be happy getting into this at 23 and a half, uh, and and maybe even simply just trading it up to uh, maybe even sort of 27, 28. I mean, if that uh, gives you back. Um, 12 and a bit percent you'd be happy but you may well um, be tempted just to hold this up to 30 uh, which is certainly on the cards if we start to breach that but that 27 28 looks really quite or potentially quite stubborn it would take a good report to push it over there um, but he might get that uh, again uh, end of feb so what i would say is when we've got multiple positions that uh, expire at the same time um, sorry, the due earnings at the same time, then what we may do is we may choose the one that that looks the most technically solid for right now and then decide to uh, either invest more uh, in that single position or more in another. So if you compare the PLLSYA, you can look at things like dividend yields and stuff like that as well. I don't think SYA pay a dividend, I think PLL do. Uh, but double check on that as well. In fact, we can find that out right this moment. Uh, no dividend on no dividend on STX. We're looking at STX, we're wanting to look at SYA. No dividend. PLL. Is there a dividend on PLL? Nope. Okay, so oh, I know what the other one was. I don't know why I missed it. Let me just hang on because I know what the other one was. And I cheated a little bit. Where's it going? Maybe I overwrote it by accident. Give me one second. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so let's get back to our slideshow. 
So our real number six, when we've cheated a little bit on this one, is one that's actually just over a dollar. It's uh, nickel mines. Um, so this is obviously in the nickel space, uh, almost. Um, if we just look at the chart here, it's about a dollar eleven. So it just popped over a dollar in the last uh, in the last few days. You can see there that that's exactly where the 200 MA is. So it's only in the last week it's popped above that. And we've had a really nice move up uh, in this. Uh, we're looking now for a breach of 115 uh, potentially to take us uh, back up towards 134, 135. So um, uh, so yeah, so that's what we're looking at with that. If we look at a nickel chart, I did actually pull this. Uh, so if we look at uh, if we look at nickel chart, you can see there's been that sort of pullback. Um, really, nickel has been trading in within quite a tight range uh, over the uh, really since the beginning of November. The fact that it hasn't dropped off significantly despite China's lockdown is is very very significant. Now the other notable thing on this chart is this. There were all sorts of dramas on the uh, on the London Metals Exchange with nickel trading uh, back in March. Uh, there's all sorts of regulations being put in place to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, but you can see that um, you can see that looking there. This is a great site. This trading economics. I'll give you it. Uh, so the estimate is is three five five two one. So it's expected to be up around this level in 12 months okay so that's about a 50 percent increase from where it is now in terms of price uh so not uh too i don't think that's priced in yet i think we're still sort of um i still think we're sort of stuck in the china lockdown thing so that's um that's where it's at so that's our number six now just a really quick is through those from last week so as i said the one we entered was a pll uh you can see there we had that bounce last week looking very good let's just put it on the daily chart uh, so there we were last week we've already jumped up from last week we've already jumped up uh eight percent so that's not bad now mount gibson iron uh, mgx uh, really hasn't shifted much. It's just sort of moved up a little bit, but technically that hasn't hit at all. It still hasn't hit our target. We were looking for a breach of uh, essentially 53 to get interested in this. We also talked about EML, um, which I that was one of our picks last week. Um, that's getting very close. Uh, we like this over 65 and possibly... Uh, if you want to play a, a safer game, uh, possibly 68 is the level to get in at. It looks as though we've sort of been stuck since last week on that. Uh, Zip really hasn't uh, taken the world by storm. It, again, it's up from last week. Uh, we are at a level now, which is sort of interesting. The close today, uh, over 62. Uh, this was a level we said, I think from memory, that we might accumulate into, because uh, it certainly looks as though we could get up to 68 in the short term. I think this is up towards 80 in the medium term. Uh, MSB um, has again gone up since last week. Uh, I mean, we met one, two, three, four, five days ago. We thought this might be turning. Uh, we liked it for a bounce off this level here. And the more conservative entry would be around about 90 cents. You can see it's tested that the last three days. So we're still holding on to that as a, as a technical level. So really we wouldn't have entered that. Our BRN brain chip, yep, uh, was the last one. Um, and brain chip, we actually took some profit and we're already in that in the portfolio last week. Um, so we actually took some profit in when it hits 200 MA. So we've got two options here, and we actually um, were interested in the fact that it didn't breach its, whoops, breach its low of 67. Uh, if we put this on here, what, so what, 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 would, what we think is that this could return uh, back up towards 75 or even it's 200 moving average at 82 but we want evidence that it's starting to move back up that it's actually found a bottom we've not got that yet um you could even suggest that 
that 66 is its uh, is its sort of natural support, was a resistance there, support there. So we'd like to see it sort of back over 68, 69, and then we might enter this again as we did here. So we've done really well twice on this. Um, as I said, the, the, the last trade was 15%, um, and this one was about 14%. So we're looking for the same again. So we we don't mind, uh, oops, we paused, sorry. We don't mind doing this, so there's 15% and there's 14%. So we're looking for a bounce off this level back up to 76 and then possibly up again to where we took profits there, where that 200 MA is around about 83. So that was how they all did from last week. So what I'm going to do is, for those of you part of the, um, uh, one of the services that I run outside of this is a long-term portfolio thing. Um, if you're interested, I'm going to add all these into that when they tick the technical box. So if you're interested in that, then uh, just ping me a little message, a little email, and I'll flick you through some details about where you can get access to that. There is actually a session tomorrow night for those of you who are part of that, so don't miss out that. But with all of these, make sure you do it on due diligence, due diligence, as I said, and make sure that you've got, even score them. So you have your six there, you score them accordingly, and of course, you can then take it to the next level but have a make sure you're fundamentally happy make sure that you are have it technically clear make sure you know when earnings are due right okay let's just has the screen frozen yes it did temporarily um uh, sorry andrew sorry shane thank you uh guys so um i think that was msb and then we went to yeah msb and then we went to brn uh, so that's our six from last week uh, reviewed and our six new ones this week to have a look at. That's going to be it. Now, uh, next week, you're already registered for our um, Discipline Trader, uh, where I'm going to be a bit mean. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how it is, why people aren't disciplined, uh, and give you some practical suggestions about how to tackle that. Because, of course, discipline is just a symptom. It's not a cause. The cause of, of, of poor discipline or good discipline is, is much deeper than that. Uh, which many of you heard. Um, if you missed the first one, um, it was posted on YouTube. Let me find the link for you. If you missed the first six, give me a second. I just need to find it. Find it. First one for today. Okay. Six stocks under. There we go. Right. Okay. Get shareable link. Okay. It's been posted in chat. So I'm going to call it round one. If you haven't seen that video, there it is. It's in chat now. OK, cool. Uh, yeah. So make a lot. If you are not part of our um, lunchtime sessions, then by all means, feel free to join in. We do this every day at 1230. I'm just going to put that in chat as well. Um, I know many most of you are, to be honest. So that's all good. OK, so we can do questions that should cover it for the Night Owl Club. OK, so trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.